The Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the Philippian church from a prison cell. And he had no idea whether he was going to be exonerated or executed. He was writing to a group of people who were divided among themselves, confused by false teachers, and surrounded by a culture that was hostile to their faith. And yet he repeatedly called them to be joyful. Well, that's weird. Your leader is in jail, your church is divided, confused, and persecuted, and you're supposed to be joyful? Seriously? How is it possible to be joyful when you face gigantic problems, to rejoice when your life's a wreck? Well, first, we need to be clear on what we mean by joy. When the Bible talks about joy, it's not talking about the kind of emotion you feel when you first walk through the gates at Disney. That's fun. Fun is more like a fix. Joy is a state of being. Fun is temporary. Joy abides. Fun's often expensive. Joy, it's free. Fun can sometimes lead to unhappy consequences. Joy never leaves a bad taste and never has a hangover. Fun and joy are not the same thing. Joy may be fun, but more often, it's a feeling of peace even when circumstances are turbulent. Once we understand what joy is and isn't, we need to be clear about where it is found. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, Paul gives us the address. He says, Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. The reason we can rejoice, even if our circumstances are mean, is because our joy is located not in what's happening to us, but in what has already happened for us. When you have trouble finding your joy, maybe it's because you're looking in the wrong place. It's hidden in an unlikely location, outside Jerusalem, on the top of a hill, nailed to a cross. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus means that we are living in an eternal morning of God's grace and favor. The past is forgiven, the future is protected, and because of that, we can know joy no matter what. Not a sermon, just thought. 